In this lesson, we're going to be talking about mixed numbers, which um, are whole numbers with a fraction. And uh, we're going to be using pattern box to help us go over this. So I've got four pattern blocks up here. And we're going to start with the trapezoid, the red one right here. And if the trapezoid was our representation of one whole, one whole candy bar, one whole pizza, anything to do with one whole, one of the other uh, pattern blocks would be equal to one-third. If the trapezoid was one whole, it would be one-third. Think about that for a second. And one-third, we know that it takes three one-third size pieces to make one whole. So to figure out this problem, we could um, take different pieces and in this case it's going to be the triangle to cover up the trapezoid. So we have one-third, one-third, and one-third with our triangles. So we've got one, that triangle is one-third, that triangle is one-third, and that triangle is one-third. Now, we know that different um, different things can be different sizes, which would mean the size of the fraction would change. So, for example, pizza. If you go to uh, Pizza Hut and buy a personal pan pizza, one slice is going to be one-fourth of that pizza. If you would buy a large pizza and cut that pizza into four pieces, you could still have one-fourth of the pizza, but the um, size of the one-fourth would be a lot bigger. So it depends. On the size of the uh, fraction piece decides depends on the size of the whole. So now, if we took away the um, triangles in the trapezoid, cleared that off, and now if we went to the trapezoid being one, or the hexagon being one whole, what would be one third in this situation? It's not going to be the triangle anymore because it's going to take more than three triangles to cover up the whole thing. If we went with the trapezoids, it would take two trapezoids to cover it up. And for thirds, we need three to cover up the trapezoid, or the hexagon. So, we've got the rhombus here. And if we take three of them, that can cover up the whole thing. So now we have one third, one third, and one third. Okay, now I'm going to ask this question, starting with a triangle. Let's say that that triangle equaled one half. Let's say that the triangle equaled one half. If that triangle equaled one half, what would represent the whole in this situation? Well, if we have uh, if, we, if we have half, we need two to make the whole. So, think to yourself, would two triangles cover up the hexagon? Well, no, they wouldn't. Would two triangles cover up the trapezoid? Well, if you remember from earlier, they didn't, so that doesn't work. So we'll bring out the rhombus. Would two triangles cover up that? We take your triangles, cover that up. Yeah, that would work. So, 
if the triangle was equal to one half, then in this situation, the rhombus is equal to the one. So you can think about going from the whole to the fraction, or you can think about um, having a fraction, figuring out what the whole would equal. For our final problem, let's think about this. In this situation, we're going to say that the hexagon is worth 1. And now we're going to figure out what all of these pattern blocks down here would equal if the hexagon is worth 1. So, we obviously have 1 here with this hexagon. And now we have to figure out what the trapezoids are. Well, if we took two trapezoids, we could cover up the hexagon. So that means each of these tra trapezoids are worth half to make up the whole. Now we have to figure out what the triangle is. To do that, we're going to um, come back up here and we're going to cover up our hexagon. So we've got three that cover up half of it, which would mean three would cover up the other half. So six total would cover up each of six would cover up the the whole so if six cover up the whole that tells us that each triangle then is worth one sixth of the whole again the the value of the pattern block as a fraction depends on the size of the one whole so we have one whole here we have one half one half and then for our triangle we have one sixth so if we took all of those together, one hole and two halves equals two holes, and then we have one-sixth. So here's our mixed number, two and one-sixth. We had two, two whole values combined, and then we have one-sixth of another hole. If you have any questions, make sure you let Mr. Brandt know. And we'll talk to you later.